All right, social studies. All right, everybody, hang in there. You're almost done. Done with the day. like for you in your textbook to turn to 88 please in your textbook 88 yes who has ever heard of Lewis and Clark Lewis and Clark they were explorers all right 88. Let's begin to 88. All right. And please turn to, in your manual, turn to 50. Oh, this is one. This is two. Fifty and fifty-one. Please turn. Here we go. All right. So Lewis and Clark. Who remembers what the Louisiana Purchase was? Whoa. Who remembers what the Louisiana Purchase was? Jonathan. Well, it is, what is it? What is Louisiana Purchase? Is it, what is it? It is a big chunk of what? Remember we wanted to buy a particular area. Who remembers what that was? Grant, New Orleans. Yes, and if you turn to 84 in your textbook, you will see the big swath of land. So you see New Orleans. It's at the very bottom, it's in the, the gulf. And then you see the pink, that is all the land that we bought from France. It doubled our size of our country. How did we have enough money for that? That is I a good know. question. I don't know, money <laughs> must have grown on trees. And maybe it had a money tree. I don't know, but they purchased it for what was a good deal and they doubled the, the amount of land the United States owned. So this was in 1803. So the Louisiana Purchase was a significant piece of land. So Lewis and Clark gave the United States a large, the Louisiana Purchase gave the United States a large amount of land. Jefferson sent men on an expedition to find out more about the Louisiana Territory. So, was this land discovered? It was just, were they, have they li lived there? Have they looked at it? Have they researched it? Do they know anything about this land? No. They don't. And it's a big chunk of land. So, an expedition. What is an expedition? I'm on page 88, and it is in bold. What is an expedition? Tessa. Yes, that would be fun. So an expedition is you pack up and you go on a long trip to an area that you don't know anything about. And that, friends, is who Lewis and Clark are. They are people who were chosen by Jefferson to go on this expedition. So Lewis, Mary Weather Lewis and William Clark. Lewis knew about the Indian ways and how to live in the woods. He knew about animals and plants. Clark was a soldier. He knew how to lead men, make maps, and measure the land. Why do you think it was important for that, to have that combination of a soldier and of more of an explorer who knew about nature, animals, Indians, plants? Why was that important? 
Tyson. Because he would know whether, uh, like, how to talk to the Indians and all that stuff. Were there um, Indians in this area? Yes. Yes. Now, if there, if you are in the woods that you don't know anything about, and if you're out there for a long period of time, would it be important to know about plants that could be poisonous or non-poisonous? Yes. Yeah. Would it be uh, helpful to know about animals so you could hunt, trap, yes. Yes. have food? Mm -hmm. Yes, because remember, they don't know anything about this land. It's completely unknown. So, who would like to read the next paragraph? M. Jefferson was interested. Jefferson was interested in science and discovery. He told Lewis and Clark to take care of their notes. He told them to, Bless you. He told them to draw the different kinds of animals they saw. He also wanted them to have fun in the neighborhood with the Indians. Lewis and Clark were to learn about the Indian, Indian ways of so who's Jefferson? Who says Jefferson was interested in science and discovery? Who is Jefferson? Jeremiah. Um, Who is Jefferson? Boy. Uh, uh, uh-huh. And who is Thomas Jefferson? He, he was a U.S. president. Yes. He's the third president. So who was the first president? Who was the second president? Who was the third president? Thomas, Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson. So Jefferson is the one who is sending Lewis and Clark on this expedition to learn, to understand what this land is all about. Who wants to read the next paragraph? Helen. Lewis. Lewis and Clark expedition. He wanted to know what was past the Louisiana. Louisiana territory. There was there was there was more land that went all the way to the Pacific Ocean. The United States must be able to claim that land. So turn back to 84. Turn back to page 84 and that has a map. The green part is the undiscovered area of the United States. So here is New Orleans. It's down here in the tip. So, and Mrs. Pinka used to live there. So she could tell us all kinds of good things. So the Louisiana Territory basically went and skirted this whole area. I'm trying to make sure. I, so basically this whole swath of land was the Louisiana Territory. Is there a lot of land left over that we don't know yet about that becomes the United States? Yes. Yes. There is tons all the way to the Pacific Ocean. Here is the Pacific Ocean. And so we have California, we have Oregon, we have Washington that all border around the Pacific Ocean. I think the Rocky Mountains blocked them. You think the Rocky Mountains what? Blocked them, maybe. You think the Rocky Mountains bought them? Blocked them. Oh, well, they had to climb the mountains. That would not be easy. There were no nice little paths that would take them or roads that we have now. So this was all unchartered land. That's a huge amount of the United States that has not even been discovered yet. So Jefferson knows it exists. He's, like, he's thinking, there's still a lot of land from here to the Pacific Ocean. Hmm, maybe the United States could claim it at some point. Do they? Yes. They do. Isn't it wild to think that that land was not even part of the Americas yet. That's how new our country was. We're reading about a time when a big chunk of the United States was not even a part of the United States. Hard to fathom. Can you imagine getting on a plane and there not being a Colorado, 
a Wyoming, a Montana, an Arizona, a Utah, an Idaho, a Washington, Oregon, Nevada, California, Texas. Wild. Well, at least Wisconsin. Well, Wisconsin kind of part of it. It was it kind of went part of Illinois and part of Wisconsin. So just a little bit of it. So, I know, how dare they? <laughs> you can't chop off Wisconsin. All those cows will be totally offended. <laughs> so, that is where we are at, friends. I want you to kind of visualize that the United States just purchased the Louisiana Territory. Before that, as you see on that map on 84, the orange is what they already claimed. Now they have the Louisiana Territory, and now there's all of that beyond the Rocky Mountains that has yet to be discovered. What do you think, when Shin kind of eluded, alluded to it, what do you think would be the hardest part of conquering or using this land as a territory? What is in the way? If you look on your map on 84, you see the Louisiana Territory. What is bordering that? What is bordering the Louisiana Territory? They're kind of big. Yeah. Grant. The River. Well, no, the Mississippi River is, it, that's the other border. That borders towards, uh, that's the uh, eastern border of Louisiana Territory. What is on the western border of the Louisiana Territory? They're really tall. Coal. The, the Rocky Mountains. That uh, would be, if, who has seen the Rocky Mountains? Who has seen the mountains? Uh, Raise your hand if you've seen the mountains. I've seen the pictures. Okay. They're very intimidating. If you think about trying to navigate the mountains without any help or roads or anything, just your legs and a horse, it would be very, very intimidating because they're very, very tall. Might want to bring a coat. It gets cold up there. And it's also different altitude. When you get high on the top of the mountain, the altitude or the air gets thinner. So that was a huge obstacle. So let us go to page 85. Who would like to read that paragraph on page 85? Olivia. Nice and loud, please. Loud and proud. Congress gave. Oh, Congress, Congress gave Jefferson the money to buy New Orleans. Jefferson sent men, two friends to call. Oh, wait a minute. You know what? We are on, I'm on the wrong page. Yeah. I'm back on the 84. I'm sorry. So, where did you leave off? Where did we leave off? 88. Okay, so Olivia, read um, page 89. In the spring of 1804. In the spring of 1804, Lewis and Clark left, left the city of St. Louis. They traveled up the Mississippi River. Oh, oh, travel up the what? Up the Missouri River. There you go. There were about 40 men in their group. Clark, Clark's personal slave. The Indians met. Yo, okay, Clark's personal slave, York, oh. sent with, with them. York sent with them. York was the first black person that the Indians met. York was an important member of the expedition. He was skilled in hunting and scouting. What is scouting? Hmm. Hunting and scouting. Tyson. Looking for people. Could be people. What else could... Um, Olivia. Um, it means like, scouting means like you're, like you look around for like any danger, and if there's a danger, you would run back and tell the others. Very good. Looking for danger, looking for people. What else could scouting mean? When she? Just looking for something. Looking for something. Emmy. Looking for animals to hunt. Looking for animals to hunt. So if you were a, if you were someone who was good at scouting, what would you have to be really good at? Winchine. Sneaking. Sneaking. 
Tyson. Being quiet. Being quiet. Helen. Um, skilled. Very good. So he's skilled at hiking and um, going through land and ter terrain that is un unusual to you, so you have to be careful. Christian. What's that? I still didn't hear you. Oh, camouflage. Yes. Very good. What about something that you would need if you didn't have a compass? What does a compass help you with? Oh. When she? Yes, a scout, someone who is, a, who is scouting, they have to be able to know what direction they're going. They have to know where they're at, which is not easy. I am directionally inefficient. I get lost very easy. I would not be good at scouting. So you have to know, you have to recognize, like be able to say, okay, here is this tree. I'm going to maybe mark it somehow, or I'm going to remember how it looks, and I'm going to be able to find that again so I know which direction I went. So you have to be able to be good at directions so you don't get lost. So scouting is a very important trait to have if you're on an expedition. Because again, you are in land that you have no idea where you are going, which, what's going to happen, what is out there. You have no road maps to tell you you are in Madison, Wisconsin. Yeah. So everything is woods, wilderness, forest, and you have to find your way around. The group traveled through lands where trappers and traders had already been. Then the group moved into lands where Americans had not been before. People who spoke the Indian languages helped the men in the expedition talk to the Indians. Why would that be important? To be able to talk to the Indians. Why is it important? Tyson. So if there's not enough animals and they know where they are and shelter, right. so they can sleep there and get food and all that stuff. That's right. I don't know if they had tents. They, a lot of times they just made a campfire and they just slept on the ground. Not exactly tents, but like they might have had some kind of covering, but they didn't have like REI to go to and pick up a nice tent to put up. So they may have had some kind of material to put over them, but they didn't have tents like we have. Yeah, or they would drape something over tree branches, but very, very primitive. You mean they didn't get the tents in Harry Potter? Oh, that's the tent I want. <laughs> that is an awesome Same. tent. Wait, I haven't gotten that far yet. Yeah, this is the last book. Oh. By winter, the group reached what is now called North Dakota. Ooh, Lewis and Clark sent some of the men home to report their discoveries. The others built a fort to live in during the winter. In the spring, the group set out. They were joined by an Indian named Sacagawea. Her husband and ba their baby, Sacagawea, spoke an Indian language, and her husband could translate it to the group. The couple helped the group talk to other Indians along the way. Being able to talk to Indian tribes gave the group a chance to trade with them. Soon the group crossed the Rocky Mountains. This was the hardest part of the journey. Then the group traveled down different rivers. They traveled all the way to the Pacific Ocean. So that, friends, if you look at your look at this map on page 91, it shows you where they went. So if you look, there is that red line that shows where they went. They went up the Missouri River. They went to the Yellowstone River, the Columbia River, and they ended on the Pacific Ocean. 1804 to 1806. How many years did it take them to do this, friends? 1804 to 1806. Two Jeremiah. Two years. Two years. That is a long time. That is a very long time. Oh. That's a long time to be on an expedition without, that'd be hard. 
Okay, so these explorers were the first Americans to cross the entire North American continent. Afterward, they returned to St. Louis. The expedition had taken two years and four months. Whoa. Lewis and Clark kept journals of all the plants and animals they discovered. The journal showed that the men had discovered 178 new plants and 122 different animals. My life would be ocean. <laughs> I agree. I think a lot, a lot of their journey, since they journeyed a lot on rivers, was with canoes. So they didn't have to traverse this whole area on foot, which would help. But that is a very large expedition. Very, very impressive. I would have to say that they would take the boat all the way because there's a lot of water. Yeah, there's a lot of water. They did take canoes. They had to traverse some land as well. But that was very impressive. So let's turn to page 50. We're going to do a fun little trip supply exercise after reading this. It says, complete the web with your teacher. You're our teacher. I am. Lucky me. So, it says, how do you get food today? So, what kind of source do we have today that we can just go and get food? When Sheen? Now you're making me hungry. <laughs> and you can go to the market or something. can go to the market. Where else can we go to get food? Luke? The grocery store. The grocery store. Where else could we go? Well, write these down. You got in these little, it says, how do you get food today? You have the little circle that says that, and there's all these little offshoots, these little squares. One, two, three, four, five. So we need to fill those in. So, so far we have market, we have store. What else can we, where else can we get food? Gabe. You can go hunting. You can go hunting. Okay. Yes. Oh. Absolutely. Tyson. If you grow a garden. Could have a garden. Very good. What else? Jonathan. Uh, you can go to a restaurant. Can go to a restaurant. Have somebody else fix the food for you. That's a lovely idea. What else, Wenxin? Can we do? What else? Where can you go? You can go fishing. I love it. Emma. You can go to a farm. You guys are so smart. We have a lot of options. Anybody else have another one that we have not mentioned? Boy. Restaurant is S R E S T A U R A N T. All right. So, how do we get food? What kind of food? Okay, how did the explorers get food? So what kind of food do you think the explorers could have gotten? Because they didn't have a restaurant or a market or grocery store or Target or anything like that to go get food. So what do you think they ate? If you were out on expedition, could you open a can of soup and heat it up on the campfire? No, I would do you, what about a candy bar? Could they just open up a candy bar or a protein bar to give them energy? Again? No. No, what could they eat? Think simplistic. Luke. Fish. Fish. Oh. What else could they have eaten? Emmy. Berries. Berries. Very good. Tyson. Deer. Deer. Very good. Grant. What's that? Bear. Yeah, if you can, if you can get it. <laughs> uh, Christian, yeah, people eat bear. If you're hungry and that's all you can get, absolutely. Jeremiah. Alligator. Oh yeah, yep. They, there would be alligators. Yes, I've heard that it tastes like chicken. Yeah. <laughs> Helen. Snakes oh. that also taste, I've heard, taste like chicken. Mm -hmm. I didn't taste like chicken. What? James. Birds. Birds. Birds, yep. Emma. Hey, if you're hungry and you have nothing to eat, you will, you'll 
You'll eat a slug. I'd have to be awfully hungry, but I would. <laughs> um, M. Uh, buffalo. Buffalo. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Helen. Yeah. There's wild apple tree. Yep, but they, they're really not like apple trees that we have. They, I'm sure they had wild apple trees. What else besides apples could they pick in fruit form? Luke. I don't think they'd be oranges back then. And they weren't down in Florida as of yet. But what about other fruit that grows on bushes? Jeremiah. Boy, berries, very good. What, oh, what if grows on the ground and they look very odd? And you have to be careful because some are poisonous and some are not. They're actually a fungus. I think they're delicious, but not everybody likes them. Tyson. Mushrooms. Mushrooms. You have to be careful. <laughs> you have to be careful, though, because not all mushrooms are edible. So that's why you would need somebody who would know their plants. Because they would be able to say, oh, don't eat that, but you can eat that. Because that one's poisonous, that one is not. Yes, Cole. You can eat some Sure. There are plants, absolutely. Like watercress would be growing in the waters. They could, you can use that. That's all natural. Jeremiah. Octopus. Well, they didn't get to the, they didn't really get to the ocean till the very end. So they were on rivers. But you probably need a big fishing ship to get an octopus. <laughs> Tyson. Crab or crayfish. Yes, crayfish. Absolutely, or crabs. Good. Emmy. Shrimp. Shrimp. Yeah. Olivia. Um, blueberries. Blueberries. Yummy. I have never ate a wild blueberry. Has anyone ever bl wild blueberry? We've seen them. I've seen them. I just have not. And I, I love like blueberries. I've heard they're more sour. I like sour. All right, friends. What else? What grows under the ground in the plant? Emma. Carrots? Well, carrots. But what is a carrot? Carrot is part of the what of the plant? Tessa. The root? The root? Yes. Yes. So the root, a lot of plants have edible roots that That's, you could eat. I'm angry now. <laughs> so how did explorers get their food? So wild meat and wild plants, it says on your book. So how did they get a wild animal? Did they just go to the store and pick it up all prepackaged and ready to go and throw on the grill? No. <laughs> no. Grant. Yeah, they had to either trap it or bow and arrow or a gun. They had to hunt. They had to hunt for their food. So is that easy, do you think? Every day you have to go out because did they have refrigerators? No. Did they have coolers where they can put things to keep cold? No. Did they have freezers? No. So did they have to go hunting and finding food every day? Yeah. 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 That's exhausting. Yeah. Really, really exhausting. So not only are they traveling, walking, paddling, then every day they had to go hunting and getting food, whether it be meat or fruits or vegetables or plants or what have you. They had to go and they had to get it themselves. Then they had to prepare it and then cook it. They really couldn't have a lot left over. So they had to be very wise in how they proportioned everything, how they prepared everything so it went spoiled. So it's not easy at all. If you think of everything that went into this, it is not easy. I would want to do that if it was you. No, would not want to do it. I would want to go to a restaurant and have a nice meal. I would even want to do that for a day. <laughs> it's, it would not be easy. It was a very hard life. So let's turn to 51 and there's a little crossword puzzle. <laughs> So, 
expedition. What is an expedition again? What is an expedition? If you don't remember, turn to page 88. It is bold, it's bold in, on that page. What is an expedition? You really need to understand that in order to understand what we just, what Lewis and Clark did. Cool. An expedition is a long trip to explore an, an unknown area. Yes. And it's very difficult because it's all very primitive. There are no roads. There are no grocery stores. There are no hotels. There's no way stop. There's nothing. Everything has to be done on your own. So if we turn to page 51, it's titled Expedition. And you have all your little words in that handy dandy box above the crossword puzzle. A man, so two across, man who knew about Indian ways and how to live in the woods. Was that Lewis or was that Clark? Look at two across. Emmy. Clark. Now look at, now does Clark fit in that? Yeah. No. No. Well, it does. They both have five. <laughs> but look. If you don't remember, look again on 88, and they're both highlighted in bold for you. Lewis and Clark. Which was one known? Lewis, what? Emmy. You are on 88. If you look at the bold letters, or bold words, it says, Lewis knew about animal, animal, Indian ways and how to live in the woods. So, a man who knew about Indian ways and how to live in the woods. Would that be Lewis or Clark? Lewis? Yeah, Lewis. So, two across is Lewis. Okay, who remembers they traveled, traveled, traveled for two years and ended up on what ocean? What ocean did they end their expedition? Luke. Cole. Yes, the Pacific Ocean. That is all on 91 on your map. Purchase that gave the United States a large amount of land. What was that? What was the purchase that doubled the size of America? Helen. Um, the Louisiana Territory. Louisiana Territory. It's just Louisiana though. Very good. And that is nine across. That's where I'm at. Man who was skilled, was skilled in hunting and scouting. Who was the scouter? Who did they have along with them that was really good at scouting, McKenna? Remember, he was the first African American that the Indians ever saw. He was Jeremiah. Yes. And who was York? M. Um, who was? Whose personal slave was York? Lewis or Clark's? Clark? Yes. All right. Very good. So we're on down now. So one down. River the explorers traveled up. Now look at your map on page 91. Which river did they travel up or north? It's written in white. Starts with an M. Page 91. So they started in St. Louis. So what was the river? Yeah. You're gonna open your book so you can see the map on page 91 of your textbook. That will help a lot. 
Grant. Yes, the Missouri. So you can see on that map on 91, they started at St. Louis and they travel up, 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 or north through the Louisiana Territory. So the Missouri River. Do you all see that? Yeah. Okay. You have to you have to be good scouters and you have to follow the directions. And what direction are they going? You can be scouters. Long trip to explore an unknown area. That would be three down. What is the long trip to explore an unknown area? Christian. Very good. Yes. The expedition. Very good. And that is exactly what Lewis and Clark went on for two years and four months. <laughs> who was the president who was interested in science and discovery? Who was the president that hired Lewis and Clark to go on this expedition, James? Very good, Jefferson. Oh, okay, we'll get, we'll get there. Oh, how could I forget her? Love her. So number five down is Jefferson. Who was the Indian woman who helped the explorers? Indian woman who helped the explorers. We're back up to four down. The Indian name is very beautiful. Yeah, I think it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I can't even say it. Very beautiful. Ah, uh, Tessa. Sacagawea. I love the picture on page 89 with the Indians. With all their beautiful beads and their beautiful turquoise. Their clothing was all usually made of deer skin and then they embellished them with beautiful, beautiful jewelry. Okay. Mountains the explorers cross. Ooh, what mountains? If you look on page 91 again on your map, it's on the west border of the Louisiana Territory. So if you look west, what are you going to find? What mountains? McKenna. The Rocky Mountains. Very good. That would not be an easy task. Not easy at all. Man who knew how to lead men, make maps, and measure the land. Who was the man who could lead, make maps, and measure the land? Jonathan. Clark. Yes, Clark. Very, very good. I think it's pretty awesome that they discovered 178 new plants and 122 different animals. I'd like to know, I'd like to see that list. Maybe I will Google that and then bring it in tomorrow. Because that's a lot. A lot of animals, 178, that's almost 200 animals they discovered. Or 222, and then 178 plants. Oh my. All right, so Ben, this is what we're going to do.